All right, Joe. So we are on a. Uh, we can only record 20 ma- 28 minutes of video on the. Uh, on the watch, we'll call it on the flux capacitor 2.0. Uh, I'm going to leave all these things in the middle. Okay. And we're going to have your gain somewhat up. We're going to have my gain up a little bit. But we'll turn that down and we'll turn this up. All right, Joseph, we're, we're wasting. Okay. First. I'm ready. Go ahead. Dude, you're ready? All right. So this is the first podcast with Joe and, uh, and Brian. Um, completely unnamed, untamed, Na- nameless, and untethered. Nameless. So we, we'll, we'll let it, we're going to let it come naturally. It's uh, when the name, it'll probably hit me when. Uh, oh, Jojo. It's all right. Start over. I can't. The fucking camera's over there. <laughs> I can't like, can't start over, you know what I mean? Scrap that. Okay. <laughs> scrap that shit. Um, so we're trying to develop some sort of fucking, uh, some sort of flow. Yeah. So we're going to use these, uh, use our time wisely. Right. And wastefully. Right. And um, hopefully we have some, some sort of shit going on. Um, so a couple of things that me and Joe were texting about. Uh, talking about X's death. X's death. Right. What's the deal? Why are people concerned? Like, I don't get why. I guess. Like, why does it concerned matter? Concerned that he died? I just don't get why it's a big deal. Because he's kind of brand new in the game. I mean, no, he's been out for a couple of years, but like, not for nothing. But the two albums that he put out were great. In I just, my opinion. All right. So let's say his music's great, right? We'll just call it great. Right. I don't really know too many of his songs. I just say he sucks because he's a, a mumble rapper. Well, not even because he's, I like some mumble rap. This shit's catchy, right? But. Because it's not 50 Cent or Jay Z or like old Kanye that like I listened to when I was in high school. Right. So I think everything sucks. Okay. That's how I was for a while, believe it or not. When I was in high school, I hated rap music. What do you mean? Like all the stuff that was current? Yeah. When were you in high school? Like what years? From 08 to 2012. Ah, that was the best fucking rap music, man. Now. Now I look back ah. and I appreciate it so much. But at the time, I hated everything that was out. Like I didn't, I didn't get into like okay, so uh, probably around the whole world, or at least around the whole nation, Little Wayne was huge. Even right. when I was in elementary, middle school, that was like when Wayne was on the rise, and I wasn't into him at all. Uh huh. Wasn't into him at all. My best friend loved him. I, I, all my best friends loved him. Everybody loved him. Right. I didn't get into him till like mid high school, and only a select few songs. Now I love Wayne. He's Pretty much his whole discography. Yeah. What What's your favorite Little Wayne album? Favorite Little Wayne album? Yeah. Like, if you had to pick. Carter 2 and Carter 3 were great. Carter 2 is phenomenal. That's Carter, my favorite. Carter 2 is very good. I'd probably put it up there with like my all time favorite like album straight through. Yeah. Carter 2. I mean, and his mixtapes were just phenomenal. I mean, the, uh, the Carter 3 mixtape was good. What and then the Carter 3 mixtape. He put out like a little mixtape before the album dropped i think it came out in summertime i don't remember that i remember the carter three was like out. after the drought I, three i thought that was the summertime when the carter three came out it might have it might have been i know it was definitely it was like summer of 08 that yeah it was summer of 08 it probably wasn't fall yet you're right yeah no it was it the was reason i remember is because i was on the ocean city boardwalk right right <laughs> you're right you're gonna puke on my equipment no <laughs> <laughs> so i was on the, i was on the fucking ocean city boardwalk and this chick came out, uh, or no, no, I was in line ordering curly fries at Curly's Fries on the boardwalk. Yeah. And it's a misnomer because they're not curly, they're crinkle cut. Okay. But they serve curly fries too, but no one gets them because the crinkle cut fries are the shit. Crinkle cut. Crinkle cut. Yeah. Crinkle you know, like, cut like, fries. Like the ridge. I've never heard that. You ever have Nathan's French fries? Sure. Those are crinkle cuts. Okay. Crinkle. So, anyway, I don't know why they call it curly fries because crinkle fi- fries are what they're famous for. It's like a fucking tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> you all right bud yeah doing great right. no 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 so okay so I, so i uh i get these fries and i'm in line and some girl she burned she gets a burned cd by some kid and i was already super fucking pissed because the girl behind the counter was kind of hot and i'm like 17 at the time right so i'm trying to mack it on her and some dude comes by and gives her the cd so i'm like oh that's fucking bitch right <laughs> you know what i mean yeah now i got no shot okay. had no shot to begin with but i had no shot with this right you know, he's 17 years old, whatever. So um, she handed him a, 
or she, he handed her a burn CD of the Carter Three, and she gets it. She's like, "Oh my God, little Wayne, I love you!" Oh. And I'm like, "What's that?" She's like, "Oh, it's the Carter Three. And I was like, "Oh, it's what's up? Mm. Like, where you been? You know what I mean?" Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know, that was my story. <laughs> the Carter Three, but I remember that because it was the summer of 2008. Yeah. So I associate the Carter Three with crinkle cut fries at Curly's. Right. Right. It's just the way my mind works, man. You know. Yeah. Um, but so getting so, getting back to X's death, right? See, this is the thing that bothers me, right? Okay. I could literally give two shits less when some celebrity dies. Like, really, could wow. not care less. That's a bold statement. Okay. Is, is that wrong of me? Maybe not. Maybe not. Because I, I just, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that love film and entertainment. I love, right. I love the film industry. I love the music industry. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm an artist myself, so I I like you know I I get in tune with the characters. I get in tune with the artists. I love right, that okay. you know I I follow them. I you know what I mean. I follow their careers. I'm I'm interested in their careers. So like, it's almost like how do I explain it? Like okay, so I grew up on like Jim Carrey movies and like Adam mm-hmm. Sandler movies, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I've seen these movies so much to the to the point where I almost feel like I know them. Like they're a part of my family or something, right? You know right, what I mean? Right. Yes, I get that. I, uh, yeah. So like, if uh, if any old celebrity dies, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. There's been celebrities that passed away that I that you don't care about, right? Right. But if it was somebody you know that I like, then of course, I mean, I mean, I, I would care. Yeah. So I think this is really what the root of it is: is that I di- I didn't know enough about this guy, right? Didn't really listen to his music, so it doesn't like matter to me. But oh say, yeah. Like, uh, and that's not surprising at all. And I like to hear what you said that you get like interested in their lives and following them, blah 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 blah. That's why I like podcasts because like when you listen to someone's podcast for X number of episodes, you feel like you know the person because you know right. the way the person thinks. Yeah. And that's why this is such a cool medium because. Yeah. It's like you're just talking and you're just listening and you hear the guy's voice. You know what I mean? Especially when it's podcast and, right. and not like a movie or a show or acting of any sort because right. it's you're getting the person for who they are. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No. Huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know too much about the death. Well, um, so our mutual friend Jacob thinks that the fucking music industry killed him. Yeah. I mean... For, for what? People are still going around saying Pac and Biggie's alive, or, or you know. So I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let me let me hit that. Hit that. That's one hundred percent pure Everclear, or moonshine actually. Joe's grandfather made it. It's been on reserve since the eighteen nineties. <laughs> it's been marinating for this night. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So I and I don't really know much about this guy's death either. It, other than the fact that he was like shot in the car, but there wasn't like a gunshot wound or anything like that, so I'm not educated enough on making whatever decision. I'm is. not worried about it. He's dead. Hmm. Okay. As far as put him in. As far as I'm concerned, but so I'm not going to get into the, the the whole conspiracies and the uh, you know I don't I don't do that anymore. I did that enough when I was a, a teenager. <laughs> I was yeah. It's a deep fucking rabbit hole to go down. Yeah, it's not good. It's fun though. It's so much fun. It's scary. It's scary, isn't it scary? Because you lose faith. Right, yeah. You don't have faith in anything like that. Yeah. Like, I was talking to uh, my buddy Alan. He, uh, I'm probably going to, I've actually had him on a po- my first podcast ever that I did on my own. I did with the, my buddy uh, Alan, the MMA fighter. Right. And he's always talking about all sorts of awesome shit like that. And um, he was trying to explain to me the difference between, uh, like, destiny and, like, free will and, like, how, um, like, if there is destiny, like, how do you have free will at the same time? Right. And I'm like, bro, like, I don't, like, I don't want to think like that, man. Like, that kind of shit, like, made me sick for a really long time. Too deep, yeah. Too deep. But it's, like, interesting to think about because it's like, do I really, like, make these choices or is this stuff going to happen anyway despite whatever choices I made? So then, I mean, when, you, when, when you're acting like that, like, your choices don't matter, you, you, everything can get real fucking hairy. Yeah. You know, like, my choices don't make a difference. Whatever happens is going to happen anyway. Right. Get real, real crazy, real quick. Yeah, that I don't even, I don't even want to entertain that right now. <laughs> that's too, too that's much for you right now, JoJo. Too deep for the intro. <laughs> too deep for the intro. Intro, um, intro, intro. No, I had a, uh, I had a couple friends when I was, uh, when I was growing up. Well, yeah, when I was like a teenager, and like uh-huh. they were super into that stuff. Wearing tinfoil hats and shit. No. That's what those people do, Joe. 
it stops them from the the alien signal from coming in their brain. Yeah. With the government. The uh, the stuff that they were believing, and like uh, they would just show me videos all day long of certain things, and and you know, uh, like people believe that Jay Z is an Illuminatist, and uh, there's so much crap on the internet, man. All these all these famous people, you know, because you have to have money, you know. And then right. the whole Freemasons thing, and 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 the uh, yeah, and the um, what's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Freemasons, Illuminati, all that, uh, the NWA, all that, all that kind of stuff. NWA, New, uh, NWO. <laughs> NWA, say, NWA is from Los NWA, Angeles. NWA, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's just fun to talk about, but it's like, I, I don't know enough about it. And see, the problem, Joe, with me right now is I don't really know enough about anything to talk about anything. You know what uh, I mean? I just like to talk. I have this cool equipment that I'm trying to use. It's like I'm trying to like... Yeah, send it. Let it flow. Let it flow. Com- combine the best with both worlds. And then Joe's back in town, so we're going to have a little fun with it. I'm back, baby. Um, what were the other things we said we wanted to kind of hit on? Um, we, we, we were talking about... Just before when we pulled up, we were talking. Well, I was reading that um, that article about the kid that died in the Bronx. Did you ever find out anything more about that, or you didn't do any <laughs> research? Because I didn't look up anything. I don't even know where my phone is. I mean, I got the simple, simple details, the simple facts of so, like what happened. He he apparently some kid, like a fifteen year old kid. The a fifteen year old kid is the one that passed away. I don't know if that was the intended. That was not the intended target, but I don't know how old the intended target was. I'm I'm pretty sure he was a young kid too, but apparently so it was a, a group of young kids that killed this other kid and they got the wrong kid. They killed the young kid. I don't know how old the guys that murdered him were. Right, were. but uh, he was the unintended target though, right? Right, wrong kid. They had the wrong kid. See that shit fucks me up. That shit fucks me some, up too. Some famous and, rapper doesn't bother me for some reason. I have no idea why. It's weird, isn't it? Because he deserved it, right? What, the rapper? Yeah. No, dude, I don't think he deserved it. It's because I'm envious that this guy had money. I'm like, oh, he's dead. Yeah, yeah, fuck. I don't give a shit. Yeah, but if you knew X, man, I got to show you some shit, dude. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Dude. All right. All right. If you knew X, man, it's like some kid you grew up with. Man, yo, if you only knew no, fucking Javi, bro. He was a great guy, you know? Whatever, dude. <laughs> don't shake his your head mu- at me no his music was good and it was for you know like people that dealt with like uh mental illness and like i'd be into that i'm mentally ill in some form or fashion <laughs> you know what i mean i'm probably like i think stuff. we all are i definitely am i definitely uh you know have have my stuff but i lost my train of thought now where i was going with this so they killed this kid right yes. they killed this kid yes. because he was posting graphic videos online of him having sex with this girl who was one of the murderer's sister. Hmm. So they were like, this kid's posting pictures of my sister right, doing getting stuff smashed that, out. Right, right, right. So right, right. he's dead. Which... <laughs> it's fucked up, bro. I it's mean, fucked up, but in a way... I mean, okay, you don't maybe not kill the kid. Give him a little beat down. But I mean, I saw the video. They took out machetes. I mean, they... Yeah. And this is in the Bronx. And this... Yeah. In the Bronx, New York, shit happens. <laughs> and it's not like they were in like uh like coming out of a deli. Coming out of a deli on the corner. So you go out and get a cheesesteak next to In front you know, of, in front of people. Yeah. Do they catch the guys? Apparently they have people well, I, in custody. I, yeah. I, I they guess caught they were... a couple in Patterson, they caught a couple in the Bronx. Right. Um so yeah, I think they're I you think can't get away with anything these days, man. I'm not saying that these kids should have gotten away with it. If but... you want to get away with murder, you do it yourself. Right, you know, and you don't say anything. These kids, how did they get caught? How do you how do you think they got caught? Just take a wild guess. I'm bragging about it on Facebook. Boom. Shit, I keep doing that. Yeah, that's all right. But uh, yeah, bragging about it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it was. But yeah, they were bragging about it's it. Fucking wild. How Don't stupid you, could you be? I, I don't know, dude. They're not like the old, uh, you know. Well, I mean, these. Uh, I Uncle guess. Uncle Vito, you know, what I'm talking about. They don't fear jail, I'm guessing. I don't know, dude. I, I've gotten arrested only a, a couple of times and only ever spent uh, 
like an overnight or two days or something like that. In yeah, jail same in West way. Virginia. It was terrible. It wasn't West Virginia, but yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, West Virginia jail. No I mean, time. It was, it was easy. Pe- I mean, it was nothing because I was like all high on Xanax when I was like in there, so it didn't yeah. really make that big of a difference. But okay, yeah, it, uh, I was like, in pure, pure withdrawal. <sighs> but um, <laughs> even if I wasn't in pure withdrawal, jail's not fun, you know. In any sh- way, shape, or form. I mean, I guess it depends who you ask. You know, if you're in prison for that long, I'm sure you. You, you know, you, you, you just make do with it, man. It's like a survival skill. You know what I mean? You can get used to anything if you're if you're there for long enough. You know, you what adapt. I mean? yeah. You adapt, and you find ways to you know have fun and do whatever. I mean, that's just living. I get that, but like. Mm-hmm. So one thing you said earlier, and I want to kind of get your take on it because I want to say something too, is that you think everyone's some sort of mentally ill, right? Yeah, most it, people. It's true, though. You know what I mean? Because like, I was most talking people. to somebody the other day, and it's like uh, everyone has their quirks, like weird things about them. And um, like like everyone has these like like negative, quote-unquote negative values to them. And it's just like to a different degree in some people, and then it manifests it way, like differently. You know what I mean? Like I'm a fucking junkie. You know what I mean, Joe? Yeah, like I'm, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm not. A, <laughs> I do know what you I'm, mean. I'm very a, well. I'm not a great person, but like I can be a great person. You know what I mean? I just have to like work at it Absolutely. a little bit more. Yeah. But like the thing is, is like they, you know, they talk about and like a lot of the shit I do. Then I'm like I'm selfish, I'm self centered, blah 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 blah. And I'm like I'm thinking about it one day, and I'm he- I'm hearing people talk about like these are the qualities I have. Yeah. I'm like, did you really just tell me I'm a piece of shit? Right? Is that <laughs> what you're telling me? Like I'm really just a piece. Like I'm a bad fucking dude. You know what I mean? Like. In some respects, you know, I do do good things sometimes. Yeah. But you're, you're just telling me like I'm selfish and uh, fucking self-centered and egotistical. It's like those are really just qualities of a bad person, <laughs> like someone you don't want to hang out with. Am I right? No, nah, totally. Like like people I that mean, I, people that I don't like are selfish, right? Yeah. They fucking lie, yeah. right? They uh, they cheat, um. They don't care about anybody else. And these are all like, I guess, forms of selfishness, right? Yeah. It's like just a shitty person. So like, I'm just a shitty person who happens to have a penchant for fucking heroin and crystal meth. Yeah. So like, so why, why am I like sick? You know what I mean? It sounds like I'm just a shitty person who likes drugs. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean, Joe? Yeah. I mean, see, like looking back. Like, I never thought I was, like, a fucked up kid or, like... Right, and I'm sure you were. You come from a good family, too. No, for the longest time, I never thought I was egotistical until I actually figured out what egotistical meant. You know what I mean? (laughs) And then, like, I don't know, self-centered and all that stuff. Like, I never... I don't think I ever truly understood the true definition of those things. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Like, yeah, of course. I think, I think, you know, even growing up, I was like always looking out for number one, always doing what I could that would, you know, make, you know, doing whatever I could to make me feel good Mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, which is why when I found drugs, it was like, wow, this is great. This is the best thing. Makes me feel awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So when I don't have those things, I'm even more Mm -hmm. of a piece of shit. Right. You know? But, uh, but yeah, I mean, everybody's got qualities. Does that mean everybody has mental illness? Probably not. But like, right. you know, and I don't even know. I don't even know if that's, that's a, a true fact that I have mental illness. Maybe I'm just a drug addict. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, just, it's it, that, that's, that's one of the, uh, one of the things is like people, so many people get misdiagnosed right. in like early recovery when they're trying to get clean. Right. Because of course, when you're coming off of heroin, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have symptoms of uh, you know really anything. I bet. Yeah, yeah. But what's the most like, common? Uh, like like bi- bipo- yeah, bipolar. bipolar. Everybody gets uh, everybody gets they get prescribed on all psych stuff meds for that. and stuff like that. <coughs> I thought, are you taking any meds right now? No, <laughs> nothing, right? <laughs> no, dude. Dude, when when I got out of rehab for the whatever time, you know what I mean? I um. They were like trying to, it was it was when I was at Seabrook. They were trying, they put me on, you, you you sit there in an office and they sit you in front of a computer. Robodoc. And, yeah, Robodoc. And yeah. It's, some, it's some guy in like California. Yeah. And I'm like sitting in there and I'm trying to get like Seroquel and all this other shit because I just want to sleep for the next three weeks, you know what I mean? Because I absolutely fucking hate myself. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And plus yeah. I've been up for like three weeks before that, like smoking right. cracks. So right. like I'm trying to just like go to sleep, you know? Right. And he wasn't giving it to me. I'm like, okay. This, I'm like this motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he puts me on <clears throat> Zoloft and I in a Bilify. So I take it for the first two know. weeks. He's like, You sound like you're um, I don't even know what those are for. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You said that, or he said that, or are you saying? You I'm know, saying that okay, now. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. remember like what he diagnosed me as. Okay. So I'm like taking him, and like uh, you know, I'm always pretty witty, and so are you, and I think that's why we like each other. You know what I mean? Quick witted, always busting balls, yada yada yada. Right. You know. So I noticed after being in Seabrook for like two weeks, I'm like, I feel like a fucking zombie. Yeah. You know what I mean? These drugs were just like putting me down, and like I had no personality anymore. Like I couldn't laugh. I wasn't like. That's why I hate it. It's like, so, okay. One of the biggest things for me is is getting my sleep back. Mm-hmm. Getting a sleep pattern back right. when, I'm, when I'm trying to get clean <clears throat> in like very early recovery. And going through detox is the worst. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the first thing is like, you know, you get on the Suboxone. Right. So usually I feel fine, you know. And mm-hmm. most of the time I could sleep. You know, but then if I, once you wean off of that Mm -hmm. and then you don't have any more of that, then I can't sleep, you know, and I might not sleep again for like a month. Right. You know, there's been times I didn't sleep for a month straight up. Right. You know, and you get manic. You mean, you mean you have to have slept at some point, but it wasn't long, right? You're talking about yeah, like maybe a, maybe a couple minutes here, a right. couple minutes there. Right, right, right. right like right. it's it's not. And this is coming coming off of shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. I mean that's what you that's what happens really. Right. But so what I'm what I'm saying is like usually I I do get prescribed something in early recovery to take maybe for a week or two. Right. Just to try to develop a pattern. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that always cracked me up is that I, I'd be in rehab. Right. Yeah. And like after, you know, after you're in rehab a few times, like, you know, the fucking deal, man, you yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. So uh, it'd be like these kids coming in, they're like, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. It's like, cuz you've had a fentanyl habit for the past two <laughs> yeah. years. Like, why do you think you should be able to sleep? Right. Like, why would you expect you to be right. able to sleep? Like, you got to just wear like, yourself out. Like this trazodone, like, isn't doing it for me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, bro, you've been doing fucking strong chemicals yeah, for a long time. Yeah, trazodone's damn thing. For some people, it knocks people out. That's why some people come in the treatment. I'm like, do you even get high? Like some people come in, take like let's let's say Suboxone or something like that, right. and are just nodding. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, it helps me. You right, know? it helps. But dude, if it you're helps. sitting here nodding off of four milligrams of Suboxone, it's like, what were you really doing out there, Cuz? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, and everybody's different, but whatever. I'm not gonna get into that. But like, so yeah, like I I I get I, in early recovery, I, I always get. Pres- prescribe something for sleep mm-hmm. nine times out of ten and uh but i stopped taking it right away you right know? like right. A w- like the first week or two i'll take it right you take it, it you get back to normal and yeah because it. i don't want to be dependent on anything and not no. for nothing dude you don't know like the side effects all these drugs and everything like seroquel especially like that's an antipsychotic and people take it for sleep i, I took it for sleep you right, know? right right, right. Like, who like who, 50, know, who knows what that milligrams. does to your yeah who can't yeah, be good fit, bro yeah dude I, I was never on a lot of it never more than a hundred uh milligrams at a time yeah i know a kid was on like a thousand <clears throat> milligrams of fucking circle straight out then they pro- prescribed it to him in rehab like bro i'm like how are you walking yeah i took 50 milligrams of seroquel one time it was the first time i was ever dope sick i was coming back on the cape may lewis ferry for christmas and i was like selling weed so i had a lot of money and yeah. i was like doing roxies and stuff like that i was doing oxycontins and then into roxies like when that whole switch happened yeah so i'm like doing a whole bunch of roxies and i'm coming back and i didn't have any and I'm like, dude, dry heaving, stomach bile coming up. I'm on this fucking boat, and it's like in the middle of winter, and it's like going like this. And uh, before I got, uh, the night before, I'm at my buddy's place, and he, he gives me a Seroquel. was the only kind of pill he could find. Yeah. So I took it, passed the fuck out. Yeah. Woke up 10 times more dope sick than I was when I went to sleep. Ah. Awful. Yeah. All right, so we're going to keep talking. I'm just going to pause this, and I got to restart the camera. But we're going to keep talking. Has it been 30 minutes already? Yeah. Okay. It's been 20, 20, 24 minutes. Okay. All right. So we're talking about dope sick shit. Well, we just got to keep recording, bro. And, you know, you see what happens. You know what I'm saying? This is, uh, this is our test run. It's good shit, though, right? We're, we're, we're like ha- making good conversation. Yeah. You think people don't want to listen to this, though? Yeah. You think so? Like people we know are just like actual people. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Because I don't, I don't, I don't really talk to anybody I don't know. That's a thing, right. Joe. You know what I mean? I only talk to people I know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, it definitely has substance. <laughs> There's substances we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know if it has substance, though. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so yeah, before yeah. we broke for a uh, technical break, I was telling Joseph about my first time being dope sick, and it was terrible. Yeah. And every other time after that was worse. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know if this has uh, some substance to it or not, uh, or substances. Uh, whatever way you want to look at it um i think there's some good humor um 
I think people would like listening to this. Probably not my mother. I don't think she would find this funny. Maybe not. I don't think so. That's all right. Our target audience isn't my mother. Right. My mother's not going to pay us to talk. We should bring her on the show. Really? Yeah. You think she would do that? I don't know. <laughs> it's my mother. I would probably know. I yeah. think she would. Yeah. What would I have her talk about, though? I don't know. She's a cool fucking woman, man. We didn't know what we were going to talk about, you know, and yeah. we just started talking. Let's just get it flowing. I'll bring my mom. You bring your mom. <laughs> we'll have a Mother's Day, yeah, you know? Mother, that, I, I was in rehab for Mother's Day, so we'll, you know. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it's tough, dude. Hang on. What, that got deep? <laughs> yeah, it got deep. I was like, I didn't know what to say, man. <laughs> it sucks when you're in rehab for shit like that, man. Yeah. It's like, but at least the thing in, like, the thing with rehab is you can AMA. You can't AMA at a jail. Unless <laughs> you're, you're court ordered. And even so, you can AMA, but then they call and they send a warrant. Right. So you never really make it that far. Right, yeah. Unless you just bounce out in the middle of the night. Yeah, but usually, all right. So, okay. So usually <laughs> when I make it to detox and or rehab, right. usually that means like I'm fucked. Right. Like, that's usually the last fucking place Mm -hmm. I end up at. Like, thank God I, you know, get there. But that means usually all my my sources are used up. Right. You know, like, dude, barely, nobody's going to be like, I can't just be like, all right, I left rehab. Let me call uh, so-and-so. Hey, can you come pick me? Usually it's like, no, dude. Yeah, it's like you're beat. Or if they even answer, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or if you even have a phone. Or if you even have a phone. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, usually I'm such in a shitty position when I end up there that it's right. like, you know, but... Yeah, out of money in the yeah. program, they call it scorecards, red zero. Usually that's how I was, bro. It was like, I had no cash. I had no place to stay. It's like that, that back of that insurance card was just like a, hey, let me find a place to live for the night. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like tired of it. Insurance is a beautiful thing for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know? Until it gets cut off when you're 26. That's when you need to get your shit together. That's what happened to me. Yeah. But God bless Obama, bro. I'd probably be fucking dead if it wasn't Barack Obama extending yeah. that, that health care in New Jersey to, yeah. to, and nationwide to 26. Um, and luckily, my dad had banging insurance and didn't kick me off of it. And it, it, I mean, it's probably the reason I'm still alive. And the rehabs are probably thanking his ass, too. You know? <laughs> my mom told me one time, I think we were in a... <laughs> I think we were in a family session or something at Seabrook. I think we were actually in that, uh, you know, when they come and they can visit for like an hour. Yeah. I think what they said was, uh, I think my mother's exact words were, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to throw a party at the end of the month now that you're <laughs> off our insurance. Have a barbecue. <laughs> Have a barbecue. Yeah. yeah, company barbecue, dude. They're going to be like, Oprah, you get a car. You get yeah, a car. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. a car. This kid's out of here, you yeah. know. You know it's a problem when you memorize your group ID. Number, <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't get that far. It started with H, Z, N, and then some numbers. You know yours by heart? No, I don't. Uh, I'm just exaggerating. Duh, you like, probably could, though. You know, I, you know how many times I've whipped out that thing, and it's like, <laughs> dude, my, my case manager that works for my insurance company, I had to have like a long conversation with her uh, a few years ago because I've been to so many places. What was the conversation like? She was just like, I, I don't know. She was a huge bitch. Her name was Gloria. So, Gloria, if you're listening... Um, from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. That's what I, what I had. But it was like a specific plan because my mother works for the hospital, so right, it's like right, a right, weird right, right, fucking right. thing. And she was just such a bitch, dude. I remember she was just always, you know, I was like always trying to get into treatment. And she was like, well, let me ask you this first. And, you know, are you, I don't remember, I don't even remember the questions, but it was, you know, pretty much like, are you ready to do this? Are you actually going to do this? Are you actually going to do that? And, and, like I asking you Maybe she was doing her fucking job now that I think about it. <laughs> I was just, you know. <laughs> Being an asshole. Yeah, yeah. But her attitude sucked. I remember that. Oh, it's because she's dealing with fucking jerk offs like you all the time. Yeah. She probably did have a bad attitude, the fucking bitch. Yeah. Um, so fuck Gloria. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know. What do you, can you think of some, like, great fucking rehab stories? Like, I have a couple. Um,. I'm just trying to think of like some top notch, like, like either humorous or like weird or all right. So the one guy when we were in rehab together, you remember Wheels, Johnny, Johnny, yeah. Johnny Wheels, yeah. Johnny Wheels was like what, sixty two, sixty three years old, a heroin addict. Oh my god, running in the streets of Camden in a fucking wheelchair. In a wheelchair, yeah. And of like, course I remember that dude. We were like Wheels, like what are you, what are you gonna do when you get out of here? He's like ah, suboxone. <laughs> just going back, <laughs> yeah, suboxone. Yeah. Like, see, my thing is, dude, like that's that's what it breaks my heart when i see people come in at like 
at least 60 years old. There was somebody I, uh, I went to rehab with, 74 years old, you know, like really? try, trying to get it. You know, I mean, hats off to him, but it's like at that point, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, you might as well just run it out. You know <laughs> like, I mean? you know, like they should just be allowed to get high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's shitty to say, but like at, at that point, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being negative about it, but I just I can't fucking imagine that going in at that age trying to uh-huh. trying to do it. Like we're you know, we're still young. We, we came in young, you know, right. Yeah, dude, I'm no spring chicken anymore, bro. This last run, like, really fucking beat me up, man. Yeah. Like, it took me a while. I was talking to our, our, our boy earlier today when we were uh, yeah. sitting by the truck that, like, uh, like I'm just noticing, like, after a year and some change that, like, I'm starting to remember stuff. Yeah. Like, I had to do something at work. And, like, I read it in an email, like, four days ago. But, like, remembered I had to do it. Yeah. And it was something, like, really insignificant, like, telling some kid he's got to call somebody, right? Right. And, like, I remembered it. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, This is weird. Like, usually I don't remember stuff like that. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. But in the same breath, my parents are going to Alaska tomorrow. And I've asked my dad probably 30 times what day they're leaving. And I was at dinner tonight. And I was like, so you guys are leaving tomorrow, right? But it's like one of those things. Like, if it doesn't involve me. I do the same like, shit. Like, I'm yeah. not really going to, like, commit it to memory because it doesn't serve a purpose in my memory. Yeah. And it's like one of those, I like to call it like a primal instinct. That's like, yeah. if it's not necessary to my survival instinct, like if, all right, what day, like I'm not getting on the plane, like they're going to be away, but it's like, yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. Dude, drugs fucked my head up so much. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I don't remember anything. Um, and I used to have a great memory. Like, yeah, man. My, 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 long, my long-term memory is pretty good, but my short-term is, is terrible. I can't remember certain dates. I can't remember. Uh, I can't. I can't. I used to be a great speller, and uh, I can't spell for shit anymore. Spell Mississippi. It's, it's fucked up. M I S S I P P I. Did I miss? I I, I missed the S S in there. M I S S I S S I P P I. Spell with one I. Spell it with one I. Spell it with one I. You can't spell Mississippi with one. I. You can I. definitely spell it with one I. You're just not trying hard enough. M I S S I S S I P P I. Stupid shit. <laughs> that's not stupid. See, that's the kind of shit you get back, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Dumb jokes like that. Yeah. <laughs> my three-year-old cousin taught me that, and I was in the car with her and my mother. Good for her. And actually, my mom, I was. It was my cousin Lucy, who's awesome. My mom was in the front seat. She's in a car seat, and I'm sitting... Cousin Lucy. <laughs> yeah, Lucy. Like the elephant. <laughs> okay. But not the elephant. Right. Um, my mom's driving. I'm sitting in the front seat, and Lucy's like in a car seat or something. And my mom's like asking her how to spell shit. Yeah. My mom's like, spell Mississippi. So she spells it, and she's like, spell with one eye. And she's like sitting there thinking about it, and I'm like, I don't fucking know. And then the little girl goes like this and covers it, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, oh, I knew that. Yeah, she got you. <laughs> She definitely got you. Yeah. I can't believe I fucking spelled Mississippi wrong. <laughs> on the not live television. Yeah. But it'll be on the airwaves. We'll make sure we time code it and shit. We're like gonna that. get live. You know? Yeah, we are gonna get live. You We're keep talking. I'm gonna go check the camera. All right. Okay. So so tell everyone or me what our aspirations are gonna be. Uh aspirations. I definitely I definitely wanna get um I definitely wanna start bringing guests on the show. Mm-hmm. You know? Like we're we're the hosts, you know what I mean? We we got we got substance. We definitely got substance. And uh and I don't know, man, like tonight we just let it flow naturally, but maybe we pick topics, maybe we don't. But um I think the more the merrier. You know what I mean? I think we get people on here and we just have a good time. Just a whole fucking yeah, crowd. Like I don't I don't care. You know, I don't give a shit. I think we just I think we just send it. See the thing is eventually I need to upgrade this. Because I only have two spots for microphones, and we're gonna need like a okay. big, we're gonna need a big arena. I see where you're going. You know what I mean. So right now it's only it's a fucking two banger. Yeah. Well, you know I mean, this this works for now. Yes. You know this <laughs> yes. might work yes. forever. We don't know, dude. We don't know. This might take off. Yeah. Is it still filming? It's still filming. Okay. Because so, it cut a short last time. I know, man. I don't know what the deal was that was. Maybe I was reading the thing wrong. I don't think so. I think it cut off. All right. So I don't know if like twelve minutes is our cap. Um, I say we talk for a little bit while longer and okay. see if it cuts off again. Okay. Um, so do you have any other, uh, I have another humorous story. I'm at Seabrook house this one time. It's sad cause this kid Mark is actually dead now. Um, he was like kind of chubby. He was like a little weird. 
Like, I, I, I was nice to him because, like, I'm not mean to people like that. You know what I mean? Like, when I'm getting high, I'm not even mean to people. You know, like, I'm not like, oh, this kid fucking sucks. You know what I mean? Like, if I don't really like somebody, I'll just, like, try to avoid them and, like, not hang out with them regularly. You know what I mean? But I'm not, like, mean. Like, I don't like to belittle people, right? And these kids were just, like, being a fucking savage to this kid. So I was always trying to be super nice, right? <laughs> so the night before he's about to leave to go up to Seabrook West... They, uh, or maybe he was going somewhere else. I think he went to see, yeah, I think he went up to, I think he went to Seabrook West. <laughs> While everyone was, like, uh, doing their, like, the, the, the nightly wrap-up, they took his mattress and, like, all his shit and put it in the shower and turned the water on. <laughs> Dude, it was a big deal, bro. They were mad. Yeah. He was pissed. Yeah, and like they all like I heard like all these rumblings about like that that was gonna happen, but I wasn't about to be like, no, dude, don't do it. That's mean. Right. I was just like, ah, yeah, I'm not getting involved in that shit. Right. But it's like kind of funny, yeah. you know? What I mean? Yeah. Like, the kid shit in the shower. Yeah. So. So, yeah, man. I, I I wish I could remember all the stories from rehab. I really do. Mm-hmm. Um, the shit that you can't you can't buy that shit anywhere. The stuff, the characters that you you're with in rehab and the things that happen, the conversations uh-huh. that you have. I just, I, I remember, and I say this every time I go is like, I wish cameras were, are, were rolling. Yeah. I wish cameras and were rolling. That might be an opportunity for some fucking money or something like yeah. that, man. Like yeah. if, if you, uh, like a big brother ask like halfway house style show yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that so many deaths are associated with that kind of thing. So they kind of like, like, I know that that's what happened with Celebrity Rehab. Remember with Dr. Drew? No. No? You don't remember that show? I, I mean, I've heard of it. Okay. Dude, this is the thing, man. I'm really, like, I love all this, like, tech yeah. producing stuff, but I don't watch shit. Right. I watch zero content. Well, so basically, yeah. So basically what happened with that is why they stopped filming that and airing mm-hmm. that was because it just proved to be, like, unhelpful, the rehabs. Like, because all these people were dying, all these people were relapsing. It showed that the rehabs weren't helpful, so they didn't That's want. That's what I get from it. Right. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. So they're like, why, you know, I think Dr. Drew was the one that put the end to it. He was like, all right, I think we should just stop. Right. Stop doing this. But like a halfway house Which would be shitty. funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, no, or, no, man. Fucking rehab is, is, was, is definitely, because come on, dude, you gotta, you, you know, you have just like this melting pot of like meth heads and heroin addicts and just dude it's great the things that happen dude the things that happen and you gotta have fun in there at least for me you know what we had a great time together at least we for me there. you gotta you gotta fuck around a little bit right you know that's the only way you know like we used to fuck around like what, what the things we used to do man is like we used to tell people we used to tell the new people like um so, so, oh, so, uh, so, bed, so, oh yeah, what? go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know, go ahead. We'd be like, oh, bed, bed bug check is tonight, man. You got to take your mattress and leave it in the hallway um, by, by 11 tonight, <laughs> you know, or something just right. crazy. And they'd be like, damn, for real? We'd be like, yeah, dude. Like, you know, we, we try to be like, try to act like, like we're showing them the ropes. You know, here's the kitchen, dude. There's where we all sit. And this is, and by the way, bed check. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so these kids would fucking have. You got somebody on the bed bug check before? Oh, yeah. My favorite one was always the pool pass. Yeah. But that's like, yeah. It's that's like, like that game like you've, you've yeah, been playing since like middle school. I remember hearing that. Yeah. yeah there's a pool on since the third floor. Since yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but this last, this last one, we were, we were taking walkie talkies. We were taking their radios. Yeah. The, uh, the behavioral text. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we take it and we like kind of learn the codes. Like, you know what I mean? Is because like everybody uh-huh. had a certain number, like the behavioral texts were like, you know, number three. Right. The nurses were like two. Maintenance right. was like seven. Counselors were, you know, whatever. Right. Okay. So we take the walkie talkie and we'd be like, you know, um. Be like uh, two to three um, adult men. Can we have a uh, a, a a Steve S to uh, nursing? You know, we'd send them like across the across the way. You know, because Seabrook's a relatively big place. It's you beautiful know what I mean? out there. It's yeah, a very nice yeah, campus. Yeah. But you have to walk everywhere. Right, like, you yeah. know, the, the detox in one building. There's residential in another building. And all the lectures are in another building. Right. So we were just sending people places. To me, that was the funny thing about it. And, and then, you and know. It's, it's harmless, too. That's what's it's, great it about is, it. It is. It really is harmless. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, and it's uh, now, like, 
thinking about it, it seems like immature and stupid, but at the time we're fucking dying. <laughs> like, you know, we didn't have TV, we didn't have cell phones, we don't have shit like music, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so like, we were uh, just taking walkie talkies, sending people different places. And 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 the humor that comes out of it is like uh, okay, so nobody knows why Steve <laughs> S is at nursing. You know what I mean? It's just like stupid shit like that. I get a kick out. Well, who of it, set you him know? up here? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's great stuff, man. I I love that kind of humor, man. You just got to joke around yeah. all the time. You know, yeah. life's too short to fucking be sad about stuff, dude. You got to be fucking happy. Yeah. There's all this bad shit happening, like the kid in the Bronx, this fucking dude, the ex dying. Yeah, you know, it's like. I don't know. Like, why not? Like, fucking play around a little bit, dude. Like, lighten up. You know what I mean? You got fucking little yeah. teenage kids in the Bronx getting stabbed. You got some rapper getting shot. And, like, there's all this other, you know, sad shit going on probably all around us right now. Humor is the best cure to everything. Best medicine, you man. You know what I mean? The best medicine. Whatever. Like, you know, spread humor, spread love. That's that's my outlook, man. That's what I'm. That's where I'm coming from now. You know what I mean? Spread humor. Spread love, spread humor. Right. You know? It's hard, though, when other people aren't like that, man. You get real frustrated. I know yeah. I do, at least. Yeah. You know, I get real frustrated when people, like, have, like, bad attitudes about stuff. And it's like, dude, like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Like, everything's just stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just stuff. Yeah. Like, I like nice stuff. You know what I mean? I wish I had, like, a nicer mixer board to do shit with. But it's like... Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just stuff. Right. You can always buy something else. Right. Well. Yeah. And all that, all that shit will come, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um... <laughs> you got me thinking now. They're just like these rehab stories. Oh, they're great. I could, I could, yeah, I could go on. They're, they're fucking, fucking days, they're priceless. You know? But um, uh, yeah, I heard uh, one story. I wasn't actually in rehab with this kid, but I, I knew this kid who they told him about the, the pool. The pool was out back. So it was like his second day in. He's still like coming down off of whatever the fuck he was on, right? And he's in his boxers and he has a towel over his shoulder and he's like walking around smoking a cigarette in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you did tell me. You know, that the, you know time. that story. You know the dude. Yeah, I'm not gonna say his name. But you know the dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sloth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, uh, oh man, I'm just. Trying. It's, it's it's like trying to run run him down, and, like think and like pull him back. It's just like almost impossible. I was in um, I was in this halfway house once in uh, Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. a couple years back. Uh, another great place, beautiful place, and you know what? The people there were were awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what happened was uh, there was actually in the house, dude, three people from New Jersey and uh, three people from New Jersey from Ocean County. Right. All like 20 minutes from from where I'm from. Just a bunch of fucking dope heads on Ocean County. Isn't that nutty? Like, how do we all end up in Austin? Yeah, I don't know. It's very strange. You guys go to the same rehab? Um, so there was two different, it was the same company, but they had two different rehabs. I, I, and then we ended up in the same halfway house that's uh, associated with that company. They probably just put you all in that one. They're like, fucking put all these Jersey cats together. No, nah, the other two were in the different, I was the only one from New Jersey in the one rehab. And then those two were at another, uh, but then we went to like, you know, the halfway house. Who sent you house. there? What rehab was that? At the time it was called Anchor West. Fuck is Anchor West? Anchor West, owned by the Arbor. Well, what rehab did you go to initially before you got sent to Austin? I overdosed, ended up in the hospital, and the, uh, what do they call it? The crisis unit came. And they And then they there? called, like, uh, almost like a uh, interventionist, almost. Right, right, I right. feel like that's, like, a shitty word for it, because it's not, like, It's you like know, a referral when I think of Yeah, when I think of an right. interventionist, I think of sitting in my grandmother's right, yeah. living room and everybody have, surrounding Joe, me. Or the Sopranos episode, where they're all surrounding Chris. <laughs> You killed the fucking dog. <laughs> but um yeah, so so where was I going with this? So I'm in this halfway house right. in Austin, Texas, right? Mm-hmm. And it's me and uh two other kids from New Jersey and like probably 10 other people from from all over. A lot of people from California, a lot of people from um from Texas and uh um the one kid, the other kid Will from New Jersey he was having a uh, a family visitation, like the weekend coming up. Are we still rolling? Uh, now we are. Twelve minutes. For some reason, it cuts out at twelve minutes. We're rolling. Yeah, we are now. Okay. So I'm at this I'm at this halfway house, this sober living in right. Austin, Texas, right? Uh huh. And uh, it's me and and 
and a, uh, like, I don't know, maybe 10 other people. And two of them were, were from New Jersey, from Ocean County. And the one kid, Will, was having a family visitation coming up, like, right. that weekend. And it, it, it goes through this whole process. It has to get, like, reviewed by, like, the the house manager and everything. Mm-hmm. So they're they're planning on his, his stepdad and mom are planning on flying in. Right. And uh so they have to they have to pretty much do like the phone interview or whatever with the, the house manager. His name was Chuck and he's on the phone, man, with the his stepdad. And you know, they're they're talking they're saying whatever they're saying. Right. And, and he's like he's like, Yeah, you know, and, and uh He's like, you know, if you guys go out to eat, you know, maybe stay away from restaurants that have uh, bars in them. And uh, and he's like, he's like, wait a minute, why why you say that? And he's like, oh, you know, because you don't want them, you don't want them drinking, and um, or you know, to be tempted to drink or whatever. Right, 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 right. And it's right. like, he's like, hold on, Will's not drinking beers no more. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, no. He's like, oh wow. Like, I mean, I knew he couldn't do the heroin, but I didn't know he wasn't drinking beers no more. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It was just, I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah, it's like, like uh, just, you know why? Because, man, it, it, it just, sometimes, sometimes, bro, that's just so funny. Like, people just don't know. They you just know don't I mean? know, yeah. It was funny. They don't man. get it. I was, uh, <clears throat> I was making amends to, like, one of my, one of my boys, right? Yeah. And, like, uh, the last time I saw, like, uh, his brother, him, and, it, and his parents. It was like one of my best friends growing up, right? They, uh, I like was going to a Phillies game with them. This is like right, it was probably a week before I wanted to rehab with you. So I'm like at the end of this like vicious fucking crack, coke, fucking heroin run, right? Yeah. So I've been smoking crack for like three days, right? Right. And then at the end of these three days, I'm going to this Phillies game with them. So I don't want to drive into Philly because I don't have enough money to get on the bridge, uh, to to get there or money to park or I had no money so like I couldn't park couldn't go over the bridge like no gas so I like met them somewhere right so I show up like forty five minutes late I get in with them and I was wearing sun I was wearing prescription glasses at the time and I was so shot out it was sunny when I left so I had my prescription glasses on <laughs> but didn't bring my prescription <laughs> regular glasses so I'm in the game the sun's going down and I go to take I'm like oh shit I don't have my glasses so then I start falling asleep there. My boyfriend's girl, or my boys. Your boyfriend. <laughs> my yeah. boyfriend. My my uh, my boy's girlfriend gets like uncomfortable because I'm like obviously fucked up on drugs, right? So they leave, and uh, you know I was like sleeping in the seat like the third inning. Right. So then my boy's parents and my boy and my boy's brother drop me off in my car um, to go back home. So apparently after the story, like from what I heard is I got back in my car and I just passed out too because mm-hmm. I was up for days, mm-hmm. you know? So they end up driving me back to fucking Camden, right? And they're like, what the fuck? Like yeah. you live in Camden? Right. So they, they, they <laughs> let me go and like, I hadn't seen them, right? So like six months later, I go to making amends, right? So I'm seeing my boy. I'm sitting out by his pool. I make the amends to my friend. His brother's there. I said, hey man, you know, I like, or <laughs> first of all, I'm like starting the amends, right? So his brother comes out with, uh, six bottles of yingling in his hands like this and comes up the steps. It's the summertime and he sets two down in front of it. My, my boy puts two down for himself and he goes to hand me two. I was like, nah, man, like I'm not drinking. He's like, oh, are you sure? I'm like, well, do you have any crack? <laughs> so when I said to him, I was like, you got a crack pipe? Yeah. He was Might like, as well give me that. Yeah. He, yeah. I was like, cause if you're going to give me these, like I'm going to be smoking crack yeah. shortly. Right. Cause like I, eventually you get to some certain point in your fucking addiction or alcoholism or whatever the fuck you want to call it that it's like, like I'm not even bothering. Right. You know, first couple times I went back out, like I smoked a little bit of weed. Right. I did a couple pills. Yeah. Every other time since then, it's been like I, I sure. just I buy crack rocks. Absolutely. Off the rip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crack and, and dope. And for the people that are listening, like, you know, that know what we're talking about, that are addicts themselves. Right. You know, whether they're in recovery or not, they know exactly what we're talking about, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's, 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 it's probably hard for people that aren't to like understand that, you mm-hmm. know. You know, how come you can't just, just drink? How come you can't just... I would love to. I would love if that yeah, that'd was Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great if though. I could. And I've tried many times, mm-hmm. you know? It's just, it's and uh, it just ends me back, you know, uh, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do the real thing. I'm going to go 100%, All the way. man, you know? Right. Well, know. why wouldn't you, Joe? Yeah. It'd be stupid not to. Right. You know? So, right to the neck, like Frankenstein. Just two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just double fist. <laughs> yeah. So, double spoon in that shit, dog. Double spoon in that shit. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So that was like, that was like a funny fucking story that I'm like, you know, I'm going to like, you know, kind of right my wrongs to the past and like, yeah. uh, 
I was like, hey, you want a beer? I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No, not really. Yeah. Well, even even when uh the one time I overdosed, it was actually when uh right before I got sent to that place in Texas. Right. And I'm sitting there, man, and uh, I come to and I'm in the hospital, and uh, there's two cops there. And mm-hmm. the one cop's, you know, pretty much read me, read me my rights, told me what happened. I had been involved in an accident. Right. And uh, Allegedly. Yeah. The Good Samaritan law didn't apply because nobody called the cops because I wasn't with anybody. Right. Um, it was an ambulance watching the whole thing go down in his rear view. And then, uh, what? yeah, so he just see me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm driving. It's pretty fortunate for you. I'm, yeah, so I'm driving. Wait for somebody to call the ambulance, the ambulance fucking saw it. Yeah, I'm, I'm driving, I can't wait to do it, you know. Right. I just pick yeah, up, course. I hit as I'm driving, uh-huh. and, uh, you know, within, uh, I feel like I was driving for two minutes, you know, and mm-hmm. I hit a telephone pole, and luckily I didn't fucking hit anybody else, kill anybody else, or kill myself. I was fine. I had a you know scratch on my head. If that. that's crazy. Anyway, I wake up in the hospital, whatever. They narc narc hand me the whole nine, right? And um, <laughs> you know, the one cop was really cool. The other cop was a, was a real dick. And charged <laughs> me with everything possible that he could. Oh yeah, well. Um, but you know, uh, and and he said, you know, you could you could go to treatment or you could go to jail, and of course I picked treatment. Um, for some people, that might not be the easy option. <laughs> you right? Know what I yeah, mean? I don't get how that's not the so, easy option, but yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Um. But uh, so uh, the the cool cop man. After like a couple hours, I'm in there, and they were with you the whole time. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, and uh, and the one cop, the cool cop, comes up to me, and, and he's uh, he's real cool, man. You know, and he right. was like, "Look, man, I got a cousin going through this shit right now." He goes, right. "I don't think you're a bad person. You know, you're obviously going through some stuff, and hopefully, you get the help that you need." You know, right. like, you know, I appreciate that, man. You know, of course, he gives me his card, right. right? And he goes, "You know, you get the help you need. Go down to Texas. Go, you know, get re- uh, rehabilitated and everything." He goes, "When you ca- when you come back, man, call me. I'll take you out for a beer." No fucking way. Are you I serious? Sw- I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm dying. And uh, <laughs> he, I, I just what? thought that was so funny. Like, dude, so obviously he doesn't get it. Right, you yeah, know? obviously. You can't fault him for that. No, I don't fault him at all. all I right. thought that was actually, like, like, think about it. It's actually a very nice gesture. Like, he was trying to be a cool dude. Right, yeah. But he doesn't know that that's, like, fucking very dangerous. Right. It'd be like, and, like, it'd be, devastating to my recovery. It'd be <laughs> if I came the same back thing and did that. You know what I mean? Um, it'd be like my dad saying, "Like, hey man, once you get a year sober, yeah, like we'll sniff some meth together." <laughs> right. It sounds great, Dad. Right. I would love that. Yeah. So you might as well say that. And like I said, you know, the people that are in addicts aren't gonna no. understand that. You know, they're not gonna. Um, they don't get it. But I just thought that was so funny, man. I was just like in my head, like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Fucking still. How not. funny would it be if I, you know, went through all that, came back, called the cop. And then me and me and the cop just had a wild night. He was like, "Dude, you want a fucking party?" You know what I mean? He's like, "Check this shit I confiscated yeah. from this kid last week." It'd be like, uh, yeah, you know? it'd be like the two cops from Superbad. You know what I mean? Go out and shooting the fucking guns. Yeah, and like Pacha. McLovin. <laughs> oh man, I love that. Oh, it'd be some wild yeah. shit. You should yeah. you should call him. See if he wants to get a beer later. Oh, I fucking lost that number. <laughs> yeah, it's not one you committed to memory. No, I try not to keep. Um, cops names in in the back of your head no dude i i, I uh, man, well, it's amazing i, how I much know there's good forget, cops out you know there I mean? but like uh, i fucking can't stand the motherfuckers dude i can't oh, it's because you keep fucking doing shit you shouldn't do right and that's all my fault dude if yeah. i was a good person if i wasn't a drug addict and like i was a successful uh you know guy right i probably wouldn't care less about yeah. cops. You know? Yeah, I mean, my dad was a cop. Yeah, he's a nice guy. You know my dad. Yeah, your great dad's guy. a very nice. Like I said, there, there's, I've met great cops. Right, I have, and, and he's the same way. He hates how there's like, yeah, that split. You know yeah. what I mean? Because some, it's, it's either one or the other. Man, like a lot of them are really good dudes, or they're really right. shitty. It's just like any other profession. Exactly. And it's really, dude, being a police officer is nobody's qualified to be a cop. You know what I mean? Like, it, like what is expected of you is completely fucking ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. to, to hold up, like, laws that are going on yeah. and protect people, like, it's fucking nuts. Like, you're protecting against crazy people. Like, it's nuts. And they got their hands tied, but, like, these are the rules we have to follow. Like, we don't make the rules, we just have to follow them. Like, yeah. I have that in my job. Kids pissing me about what the rules are, and I'm like, what, what are you bitching to me for? Like, sure. I didn't make the rules, bro. Like, exactly. I just fucking work here. Exactly. Like yeah. fucking to the and line. I, yeah, and that's with anything in life, man. Mm-hmm. I, I get that. It's just, you know, I've, I've, 
<laughs> got a record <laughs> yeah i have i have a hell of a record i have a hell of a record man and 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 i've been uh you know um i've been harassed by police i've right. been you know nothing nothing too bad i never got like the shit kicked out of me or anything right, but right, like right, right. but like you know Enough. they've definitely take advantage you know right. and um and that's just my personal experience and like i said dude i know that every, every cop's like that your dad's a great person you know what i mean and and uh Good men, but uh, good men. Yeah, like I said, I, I've I know I know good cops. I know good cops. You know, I have uh, I have friends that are cops now, which is fucking insane because even some of them were wacky back in the day. <laughs> wacky. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you crazy, yeah, dude. Yeah. Mom, mom, you crazy. Yeah, you crazy. All right, JoJo, I think this is good. All right, for a good beginning. What do you awesome. think? Yeah, you comfortable yeah. with that? Any final I words you want to say? No, nah, man, Before I don't want to say shit. <laughs> well, you've just been saying yeah. shit for the past hour. Now right? You say no, nothing? I think it's I think it's great. I think I think, I we're, think we're on a uh, we're on the right path, dude. Right. So cool.